Hello and welcome, I'm Elaine Canyon, sweetly writing happily ever after, one book at a time. And in this video, we're talking about publishing on an almost nothing budget. I'm really excited to kick off this series where I show you the ways that I'm self-publishing on a very tiny budget and spending my time instead of money to get my books out into the market. I wanted to share with you ways that I've worked to improve my writing and craft without spending a lot of money. And I'm doing this because one of the things that I saw and was kind of battered with when I first decided I wanted to move out of writing fan fiction and into writing original fiction were so many people who wanted to take money from me in order to show me the right way to write a novel, whether that was selling me books or selling me courses or even just selling me like coaching time. There were plenty of people who for a price wanted to show me how to write. And I was determined to find the really good resources that would show me how to write for free. And I'm gonna share with you my favorites. I'm gonna share seven resources in this video with you that are all completely free and will absolutely improve your writing. They've improved mine and they're still tools that I use and go back to again and again and again. I'm also gonna share with you one paid resource that I budget for every year. It's in my family's finances that this is something that I do. And I'll explain why when we get to it, but it is a very cost-effective version of this specific thing. So my number one resource isn't actually a resource. It's you. Write. My number one suggestion is to just write. I look at those very first words I wrote all the way up to the 500,000th word I wrote and up to the millionth word I wrote. And when I look at where I was as a writer between those places, it's night and day and I can see the progress. I don't think you need to write 1 million words to find your voice or whatever the quote is, or even write 1 million words to be a good author. I don't think you need that. I think we're constantly improving. And at any point in time, you're going to be better than you were before. So I am positive that the words I write right now, although I like them and I'm proud of them, they're going to get better. I'm going to get another million words under my belt. And when I get to that point, I'm going to look at the words I wrote at 1 million and be like, oh, well, I was glad I was there and I'm really glad I'm where I'm at at 2 million, wherever that lands for you. Make sure that you're writing, that you're practicing craft, that you're taking time to put words on page. You can't do that consistently without improving. Ray Bradbury has gone on record as saying it's impossible to write 52 bad stories if you're writing a story every week. Writing is something that improves the more you do it. It's like any other muscle or any other kind of exercise or practice that you're working on. The more you do it, the better you get at it. My second resource is one of my personal favorites because it's just a lot of fun. Brandon Sanderson is a name that a lot of people know now. He is an author that I knew back when Elantris came out. Um, I didn't follow him religiously like a lot of people I know have done, but I was aware of who he was. I read Elantris, I read the first book of Mistborn. Um, I kind of followed him a little bit here and there. This was about the time where I realized romance was more what I wanted and less of just the fantasy. But Brandon Sanderson is a very good teacher. Whether you like his writing or not, the man teaches very, very well. He currently teaches at Brigham Young University and he teaches a creative writing course. In 2020, before everything went down with the chaos that was 2020, Brandon Sanderson decided to record all of his lectures from that semester and put them up on YouTube on his YouTube channel. You can watch his whole lecture series for free on YouTube. Now, it obviously is geared towards writing sci-fi fantasy. 
because that's where he writes. But that doesn't mean that what he teaches isn't useful in general. It just means that he's gonna have an entire lecture on magic systems. And honestly, it was super cool. And I have gone back and watched these lectures multiple times. And I have practiced things that he's taught in these lectures multiple times. They are gold and they're free. They're full of amazing advice and tools for your toolbox. And if writing wasn't such an important part of improving your writing craft as an author, I would have made his lectures number one on this list. But you need to write, so write. And then watch these lectures because they're phenomenal and just a lot of fun. Resource number three are writing podcasts. And I have given you my six favorite that we're gonna talk about and why I love them. And there are so many, so, so, so many writing podcasts out there. Um, some of them have gone the way of the dinosaurs and others are still going strong. I hope that all of the ones that I'm gonna put on this list are still going strong well into the future and that this video can kind of be evergreen with it because I love these podcasts and I really don't want them to ever go away. But let's dive into these six podcasts that for me are invaluable to improving my writing craft. Writing excuses. In 15 to 20 minutes, Brandon Sanderson, Mary Robinette Colwell, Dan Wells, and Howard Taylor give you succinct writing advice that take away all of your excuses as to why you aren't writing. If you choose to check out writing excuses, I highly suggest that you start with season 10 and then go on to season 11. And then after that, go through the backlog. They're in season 18 right now. There's tons and they have different guests come in and out. But season 10, they walk you through the process of writing a novel. The whole year was nothing but writing a novel. And then season 11, they introduced you to elemental genres and they did deep dives into what their elemental genres were um, for their list and why they felt that way and really dug into what is needed in certain stories and what needs to not be in certain stories. It was really fascinating and just super helpful coming out of fan fiction into original fiction to have someone explain all these things to me in a way that was easy to understand. Um, Writing Excuses also has publishing advice that's in there. Granted, it is geared towards traditional publishing, um, mostly because the vast majority of their hosts, because the hosts do shift as you get further through the seasons. Um, for instance, this season, season 18, Brandon Sanderson has officially become an emeritus member. But almost all of their hosts and their guests are traditionally published. Now they do have some self-publishing advice that they give a little bit here, a little bit there. And oftentimes it does come from that lens of someone who's traditionally published or that lens of a traditional publisher. So just keeping that in mind that when they give self-publishing advice, um, when I compare their self-publishing advice to self-publishing advice that I get from people who are self-published and are successfully self-published and thriving as self-published, there's a big difference. There's a, a massive gap between what they'll say on writing excuses and what people in the industry actually say. So take that with a grain of salt. When they do start talking self-publishing, I'll be honest, I listen and take what I think I can take and then let it go because most of what they say doesn't match what people in the industry are saying right now. Publishing advice aside, I think that the writing advice they give is absolutely spectacular. They always have a fun writing exercise for you to do at the end. And overall, it's just a really good podcast and I love that it's short because everything I'm gonna talk about from here on out in the podcast, they get long, very long sometimes. So it's nice to have something that posts once a week and it's 15 to 20 minutes and then I can move on with my day <laughs> and feel like I did something. Next is releasing your inner dragon. This podcast is hosted by Michael Alexander Drake and Marie Mullaney. I love this podcast. It is very writing craft centric. 
And I really love that Drake and Marie will take what they're currently working on and bring it to the podcast and break it down with you and explain why they're making choices they're making and how those choices are affecting the overall story. And I really love that when they bring their rough drafts into the podcast to workshop a little bit and talk about and bring examples out of, as Drake specifically will read text he'll stop himself and say, now that right there, that sentence, that's gonna get fixed in edits and this is how I'm gonna fix it. So it's super helpful because sometimes they're rough drafts. I'm listening to it and think, wow, this is amazing. This is phenomenal. Now granted, they've both been writing for a very, very long time, but they'll stop and point things out in their own work that you look at and go, oh, I didn't think of that or I didn't see that or I didn't hear that. and it's just been super helpful to listen to the two of them explain why certain rules exist and how to break those rules and why you would break those rules and when you absolutely don't want to break those rules. There's a lot of really great advice that they have to give. I also love that Drake once a month holds a Zoom Q&A. So you can go to his website, I'll link it down below, and sign up to be able to get a link to the webinar. And he literally sits there, he does a 15-ish minute lesson at the beginning on something in writing craft, and then just answers questions for an hour. And when you get to the end of the hour, he says, okay, see you next month, and we all close out. It's so helpful to be able to sit and listen to him and listen to questions that other people ask, because sometimes I go without a question. I'm in the middle of something and I'm not at a point where I have questions yet, and listening to what other people ask is just a really great way to look for the things that you don't know you don't know yet. If you've ever heard that expression, you can't know what you don't know. And hearing other people's questions can help you learn what you don't know. And those Q and A's are free. Drake doesn't charge for them. It's a service he gives to the writer community and it's invaluable. And I highly suggest that even if you don't go listen to this podcast, go sign up for that webinar because it is an absolute gem in the writing community. And I'm shocked that there aren't more people in these Zoom calls every month because how many other authors take an hour out of their month to sit down and say, okay, bring your questions. I'm here. Like that's amazing. And I'm super grateful for it. The third podcast is called Writer Dojo. This is hosted by authors Larry Correa and Steve Diamond. I really love um, the interaction between the two of them. Larry and Steve are guns blazing, like they're just in it and they're gonna give you their opinion. And it's just refreshing. It's nice to have someone who just walks in and has kind of this attitude of, if it sucks, it sucks, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. They also give some good publishing advice, at least on the marketing end. Um, they both know what it is to be self-published. They've both worked in the self-publishing world, so when they give self-publishing advice, it's really good self-publishing advice, but they also give a lot of really great marketing advice. They give really good advice that's succinct and to the point. It's a lot like writing excuses, except they'll go into a little bit more depth and detail and they'll push a little further into the topic than writing excuses can with that 15 to 20 minute um, time length because Writer Dojo will do a full hour and really dig into that nitty gritty of what makes a certain part of writing work and what doesn't. Uh, if you are a horror writer or a suspense writer, or an action writer of some sort, these two guys are your guys. Cause there are absolutely episodes where I've been like, oh, we're getting too detailed and I'm done. Um, and I don't do horror, I don't like scary, um, I don't like description. And every now and again, like they've got episodes about monsters. They did, I think two or maybe three episodes where they talked about monsters. And yeah, I didn't make it through all those um, <laughs> because it's just not my thing. But if you write in those genres, these are your guys. Um, Larry Correa is a gun nut and he is really detailed about that sort of thing. And so if you have questions like that, that's your guy. Um, he knows everything there is to know as far as 
describing firearms in your writing and how to work with them. And he does have episodes that are specific to that. And so I highly suggest Writer Dojo. They're just also a lot of fun. There are a couple of guys having a good time and it's fun to listen to them. This fourth podcast is Unstoppable Authors. Angelina Trevena, Holly Lynn, and Julia Scott come together to talk writing tips and publishing and self-publishing, and they bring guests on to do all of that. And I love these three because they are big proponents for discovery writing. They are discovery writers, and they're big advocates for other discovery writers. And saying that it's okay if you don't outline and pushing against that stereotype that if you aren't outlining, you're not successful. And that was so validating for me when I found them because so many other um, podcasts that, especially ones that I've mentioned on here, the authors are outliners and it can feel disheartening sometimes. And so it felt like coming home to come to Unstoppable Authors. I also love that when they give their writing advice, they're really specific to make sure that they're giving you lots of ways to use it. So they, they tell you how they do it and then they brainstorm ways that you could use it in other fashions, which is nice. And I enjoy that these three ladies are coming at self-publishing from a slightly different angle than a lot of people. They're coming from the same angle I'm coming from, where primarily they were stay-at-home moms before they started writing. They, like me, might have had a side gig that they did from home but they're balancing family and writing and publishing and everything that goes into that. And they talk about that. And so if you're like me or like them and you're coming at your writing career from that position, this podcast feels like you belong here. And I love it. And it's one that I continually take time to listen to. And I go back and I listen to backlog episodes when I'm like, oh, I need help with this one thing. And I'll go back and I'll find an episode on that one thing. They're a podcast that it's worth my hour to go back and listen to. This fifth one is the Fantasy Writers Toolshed. And it's actually one that I found recently. So I haven't listened to his entire backlog, but I like that Richie Billings, who's the host and he's also a fantasy author. I like that some of his episodes are a little on the shorter side. So you can pick and choose to have like a 25 minute episode, or you can listen to his longer ones. He does have hour long episodes. And he goes through and specifically looks at everything from the fantasy writer's uh, perspective, which is really helpful for someone like me who's writing fantasy romance. But a lot of what he uses in there is good for just world building in general. And he also shares tips for writing. And so even if you're not writing in a fantasy realm or in a sci-fi realm or in any realm that needs some extensive world building done, Richie Billings has good writing advice as well. So I haven't listened to all of it, but what I've listened to so far, I've really liked what he's put together. And I think he's worth checking out regardless of what genre you're in. This last one, I don't think that you can be a self-published author and not know who Joanna Penn is. Um, there probably are people who want to be self-published or are self-published and don't know who Joanna Penn is. But if they don't, or if you don't, I highly recommend that you come and get to know her because Joanna Penn has been self-publishing, I think since like 2008 or something like that. Like she has been in this business for a very, very long time from essentially the beginning. And it is fantastic to go through her podcast and hear about not just the writing craft, but also the self-publishing side of it and how things have grown. And she's just super optimistic. Like nothing gets her down. She finds good things to say about AI. And right now everybody has something bad to say about AI. So it's just been really great to have almost like a pillar that I can look to for someone who's a very good writer, first of all, she's a fantastic author. And then also to be able to have all of that wisdom and advice. And she brings other people in to talk about it too, to give you a good idea of what's going on in the publishing world. She starts every podcast off by telling you the news in self-publishing. And so you don't have to go digging for it. She's there to tell you what you need to be on the lookout for and what you need to know what's going on. I didn't read a lot of the chaos that went down with Penguin Random House and all of that, 
but I knew a lot more about it than I would have if it hadn't been for the weekly episodes of The Creative Pen. And then she just gives good writing advice. When she does writing craft videos, she brings in people who know what they're talking about and are really good at teaching it. Um, she had John Truby come on and talk about the art of genre, which by the way, if you haven't read that book, highly recommend, great book. And then she's had Becca Saini come on, who's a success coach, who's had great ideas. Like there's just a wide variety of content there and all of it is well worth your time. So those were the writing podcasts that I wanted to share with you for number three. Now we're gonna move on to number four, which is writing blogs. I'm gonna be completely straight with you here. I'm not good at following blogs. I'm not good at consistently reading blogs. But when I'm trying to figure a certain thing out and I Google it, writing blogs are really helpful because they'll usually do a very good job of explaining the situation that I'm trying to work my way out of in a story um, or a grammatical rule or a structure situation. They're really helpful in that sense. But I don't subscribe to many. In fact, I only actually subscribe to one writing blog, which is the New York Book Editors blog. And I read some of what they send into my inbox. <laughs> if it looks interesting, I'll go read it. Um, and then I don't read a lot of it. So it's just not my forte. But when I've needed specific answers, I've usually found those answers in other people's writing blogs. So if that's something that works for you, then it's a great resource. And I'm not the person to give you suggestions for what to go follow. <laughs> but I'm sure that there are other people are. If you have a writing blog that you think is phenomenal and you follow, or if you have a writing blog that you keep up that you would like people to know about, drop it down below in the comments because this is a place where I know it's useful, I've used them, but I don't follow them. And I'm sure that if I did, I'd probably be better for it, but it's just not in my head to do that. Number five. 20 books to 50K puts all, and I mean all, of their Las Vegas writing conference videos on YouTube. This is invaluable. I cannot tell you how phenomenal this is. You'll go to the 20 books to 50K YouTube page and they have playlists. There's more than 150 videos per conference and they have the last two years worth of conferences up. This is an entire writing conference at your fingertips. You can go through and watch writing craft videos. You can watch publishing videos and it's all self-publishing because 20 books to 50K is a self-publishing group. Everything that you can think of, whether it's writing craft or book marketing or how you should publish and where you should publish, all of it is probably covered somewhere in these last two years worth of conferences. And from what they've talked about next year, they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna record the whole thing and they're gonna put it up on YouTube afterwards. Now, the reason they do this is because you can actually buy a virtual ticket to the conference where you get live streams of these. And so if you're willing to wait, a few months after the conference, they just slowly put all those videos up. So part of that means because we don't buy the ticket, we're watching it on YouTube, we don't get access to the slides. Um, oftentimes, if they weren't able to get slides up on a projector or get slides to whoever was supposed to get slides for the videos, you get videos without slides. Um, you'll get videos where the audio is not great or where the picture is not great. There's some videos that are just super hit and miss but you have more than 300 to go through. So a handful of them being a little hard to understand or not having access to see the slides and the presenter relied on the slides through their entire thing, it's okay. Because in the end, you got more than 300 videos to go through and there's so much to learn out of those 300 videos about everything in the writing process. Plus, 
This YouTube channel also has Craig Martell, who is the founder of 20 Books to 50K, and his five minute focuses. There are more than 650 of these little five minute videos where he teaches you something small. He has a series about newsletters in them that walks you through newsletter basics. It was really fun and it was helpful for me because I'm trying to get a newsletter put together. Everything that 20 Books to 50K does is just fabulous. And the fact that they put all of their Vegas conference up online for us to watch is a huge blessing and I'm super grateful for it. And even if they stopped now and they only put those two years up and they didn't ever put another year up again, I've benefited so much from those two years that I, it would be worth it. I wouldn't even be mad. Like those two years by themselves are phenomenal. Number six is writing groups. Writing groups can be so hard to coordinate, to upkeep, to keep going, but they are so helpful as well. If you remember in the podcast, I talked about releasing your inner dragon and Michael Alexander Drake. Drake teaches that writing groups aren't there for your writing to receive a critique. Writing groups are there for you to learn how to critique other people's work. Because when you start finding the problems in someone else's work, you now are at a point where you can start finding the problems in your own work. And when he taught that, everything in my mind shifted about writing groups. I was hesitant. I didn't like the idea of someone critiquing my work. I didn't like the idea of having someone tell me that it was terrible. Um, <laughs> and when he taught that that's not what it was about, it was almost like giving me permission to be okay with someone telling me my work was terrible because it was my job to find where their work was terrible so that I would then find it in my own before they ever got to it. And it's been huge and he's right, I've seen it. I found a writing group, I found mine um, through my local NaNoWriMo chapter and the accompanying Discord server that came with that and then we are a break off of that server into a writing group. and. It's been huge to be able to see other people who struggle with the same things I struggle with because now that I can look at their writing and it's not my story, it's their story, and I can see where they're making mistakes, all of a sudden I'm now able to see where I'm making mistakes. I'm able to look at a passage in my own writing and go, oh my gosh, this is literally just talking heads. There's nothing here. And I'm able to see where I'm pushing a character into a situation that doesn't make sense for them or they're reacting in a way that's like, okay, enough, we get it. Um, like, it's been so helpful. And if NaNoWriMo is not your place to try and find a writing group, there's other ways to find them. There's Facebook groups that are literally set up to show up and say, hey, I need a writing group and to get together with people online. Um, if you don't like meeting with people online and you live within a reasonable distance to a library, go ask the librarian if there is a local writing group. If there's not, ask if you can try and form one. There's a lot of stepping outside of your comfort zone with a writing group, but it's so much better to step out of your comfort zone with a writing group and be able to learn how to see your own pitfalls in your writing by looking at other people's rough drafts that it's worth that initial discomfort. And the end goal that you're working towards is becoming a better writer. And sometimes it requires a little bit more effort than saying that you're gonna take the next few days to watch all of Brandon Sanderson's lecture series. Um, <laughs> and it's gonna be hard, but that time investment and that investment of discomfort is rewarding because in the end, your writing will improve by so much in ways that you don't necessarily know that you need to improve right now. Okay, I have saved number seven and my one paid thing for the end on purpose. So I'm gonna tell you what these two things are and then I have something to say about both of them that I'm really excited to tell you about. So number seven for our free resources is the AuthorTube Writing Conference. This is a completely free writer's conference and it's all on YouTube. It was started by the lovely SD Houston, who is a friend of mine. 
and an absolutely wonderful person. If you like writing sprints, go check her channel out. I'll link her down below. And she sprints a lot. She does writing sprints a lot. And if you enjoy having someone to help push you along and keep the timer going for you and have a fun group to chat with in the live stream, highly recommend her. She also runs a um, self-publishing tips and tricks show that is very useful and also recommend that. But the AuthorTube Writing Conference. This is a three-day event. All of the videos happen live. Um, some of them will be pre-recorded and will show up as a premiere, but a lot of them are live streams where in the chat you'll get to ask questions. You get to hear from authors and self-publishing experts and traditional publishing experts, and everyone comes together to learn about these things, and it brings the AuthorTube community together. Its first year was last year. This year it's also happening again, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited for it. So those are my seven free things. Now I'm going to tell you the one paid thing that I budget for every year. This is the Canab Writers Conference. It's held every year in Canab, Utah, which is near the Utah, Arizona border over on the Nevada side, not on the Colorado side. And it is a small and local to me writers conference. I encourage you to try and find your equivalent of this. These conferences are usually really well priced and they bring you in contact with people in your area that are in the writing community. It's really great, this international connected world we live in. I love that I'm making friends with people who live on the other side of oceans from me, but sometimes it's nice to find out that you have people who live 30 minutes from you who are also in the writing community. It helps sometimes to feel connected that way and to not feel isolated. Especially if you're like me and you live in a rural area, it can feel really isolating to be like, oh, well, all of the writing people I know live very far away from me. <laughs> and so I highly encourage you to find a writer's conference or even just a writer support group, something that is close to home. And it doesn't necessarily need to be small, but just a way for you to get to know the writers around you. It makes a big difference to know that you aren't the only one. There's something special about being face to face with someone or knowing that you're only a couple hours away from someone that can create community with you in person. One of the nice things, if you can find a smaller conference like this one, is that a lot of times they'll get big names to come in and you don't have to fight with everybody in order to talk to these big names. I got to have a wonderful conversation with James Artemis Owen and his fiance last year at the Canab Writers Conference. It was really cool to meet somebody who was making as much money as he makes and the kind of legend that he is, especially in the fantasy community. And I got to stand there and have a conversation with him and his fiance at the time. Like it was cool. And you don't get that as much at those massive conferences. And you have to fight for it sometimes at the massive conferences. But I didn't have to do anything. I literally just had to walk up in line with them for lunch and I got to sit and talk with them for a while. And that was neat and made a big impression on me because I realized that there are a lot of authors out there that the only reason it's intimidating is because there's a ton of people also in line to talk to them at these bigger functions. But at this little conference, I didn't have a ton of people to fight with to be able to say hello and just get to know a little bit more about him. Okay, so there's a reason that I saved the author to Writers Conference and the Canab Writers Conference as my last two things that I talked about in this video. My last free thing and my worth paying for thing. And that is because I'm super excited to announce that I have been selected to speak at the Author Tube Writers Conference this year. So it's being held June 23rd through June 25th of 2023. I will be speaking on the 23rd about thriving as a discovery writer. 
I'm also excited to announce that I have been selected to speak at the Canab Writers Conference as well. So that is being held November 2nd through 4th of 2023. And there I will be speaking on thriving as a discovery writer. I will also be speaking in their special session of self-publishing on a shoestring budget. And there I'll be talking about building your cover design toolbox. I will link everything for this in the description down below so that you can get to the author tube writers conference because that is 100 free and i hope you'll come and see me present and join me in watching everybody else who's lined up they've got some great speakers lined up for this um, and i'm super excited about it and then if you live anywhere near the utah arizona border i would love to see you at the knapp writers conference they also have so many cool people lined up to come and speak about writing craft and self-publishing and marketing. It's going to be super fun and I am so excited. Do you have a favorite resource for improving your writing craft that's free? I'd love to hear about it down below in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps other authors to find it. And if you don't want to miss my next video on ways to help you self-publish on almost nothing, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. I post videos on Wednesdays about discovery writing, cover design, and self-publishing on almost nothing. I hope to see you again soon.